All right. That was longer than 15 seconds, but here we are. So welcome to Deep Stretch. Um, today we're going to be getting into, um, you know, kind of one of our denser philosophical topics. So I'll try to sort of sprinkle in that knowledge as we're holding our postures for a little while. That way it's not a huge amount of information all at once. With that being said, kind of a, a refresher on what yin or our, we call it deep stretch here at Practice Indy, what yin is. It's a modality of yoga where we intentionally hold postures for longer than we typically would. And we specifically make that choice to hold things longer so that first of all, we're almost forced to sort of confront some of those physical sensations that in faster moving classes, we just skate right over. So there's more of a meditative component as well as uh, muscle memory. Muscle memory is kind of a phrase that I think we've all heard from time to time in our lives. But muscle memory has so much more to do with connective tissue than it does just muscle fibers. So it takes anywhere from 30 seconds to sometimes three minutes for our muscles and our joints to recognize change as intentional in our bodies. So we're going to hold the majority of our poses anywhere from three to five minutes to get over that threshold and really instill some change into the, connect, the connective tissue that holds those structures together. So that's our nerdy little moment. Um, we're going to get started today in a comfortable seated posture. So as I move away from the camera, you might need to up your volume just a little bit. There's a pro tip for you. So I'm going to slide back. You get yourself set up with any music or props that you need. And we're gonna get going this evening. And so just a reminder that props that I recommend for this specific practice, blocks will be very helpful if you have them. Pillows make a great substitute. Um, a bolster is also really nice to have, but not everyone has easy access to a bolster, uh, a couch cushion or a full body pillow from, um, from your bed can be helpful there as well. So just get yourself settled in a nice seated posture. That can be our Sukhasana, our easy seat. Maybe your legs are out long in front of you. If you prefer that, that's just fine. But just give yourself a moment to kind of let gravity really settle. Allow your hips to rest heavy on the floor. Maybe your eyelids start to just drift closed on their own. And then notice what happens as you close your eyes. Whether you're new to yoga or a seasoned practitioner, when we give ourselves the space and the permission to just sit down, to slow down, likely your body kind of responds in kind. Your breath will slow. Maybe those first couple of breaths feel a bit more like sighs. Just notice. And as you sit, notice if already parts of your back become a little tired. See if you can sit up a little bit taller. Shoulders are stacking right over top of your hips. So it might even feel almost like you're tipping back a little bit more than you normally would. Really feel the tips of your pelvis, your sits bones, if you will, taking that weight as you sit. Breathing slowly, initiating this transition from everything that came before practice to all the things that we have yet to embark upon over the next 50 minutes.
And with each of these long held postures, just as important as the pose itself are the transitions into and out of that shape. We want to really use that time to move slowly so that we can learn everything we possibly can about the sensations that take us into and out of a pose. So as you sit here, just notice if already you're feeling the urge to move things, maybe a little neck stretch. If you tend to have kind of air filled joints, maybe your knuckles or your neck need to pop a little bit here, just really lean into whatever your body is asking for. And even if you still have a very supreme awareness of everything happening around you, just maybe recognize you're a little bit more present in your practice now than you were a few minutes ago. It's never a clear start on, okay, yoga wasn't happening and now it is. But right about now, we're somewhere in that gray area. Our practice is just getting started. We're breathing with a little bit more intention. So all together, exhale all of your air out, no matter where you are in that pattern, breathe out. And then take a deep breath in through both nostrils. At the top, sip in a little bit more. And then open your mouth, sigh it out, let the air go. Do that two more times, breathe in deeply. At the top, take in a little more. And then sigh it out. One more deep breath in. A little bit more. And let it go. Feel your lips. And start to breathe both in and out through your nostrils. Keeping that steady rhythm, knowing that your mouth can open at any point if you need to sigh or forcefully let some heat go. We'll start to make our way into a Supta Baddha Konasana, a supine pose. Start to blink your eyes open. If you have blocks or substitutes for your blocks, you'll want one on either side of the long edges of your mat. So just make sure that those are within reach. If you're not already facing the front of your mat, go ahead and orient yourself just so. You're gonna bend your knees, bring the soles of the feet to the floor, and then slowly without rushing or forcing, just lower yourself all the way onto your back. So right about here, you should have one block on either side of you. Soles of your feet will come together. Knees will open out nice and wide to the sides. Now, because we're here for a little while, those blocks might start out on a high level or that middle level, perhaps. And you're gonna slide those blocks underneath your outer knees. So they're serving as little bookends to help support your thighs as gravity starts to stretch through the inner thigh, the inner hip. Of course, at any point, if you notice that you'd like to drop those blocks to a lower level or set them up a bit higher, that is 100% your prerogative. But really use these first 30 to 45 seconds to get everything settled just right. So you might need to tuck your tailbone, you might need to roll your shoulders, you might need to adjust things until they're just right. And then drop the backs of your wrists down towards the floor. Close your eyes once again. And let every trace of effort melt away.
perhaps feeling as you breathe the back side of your body as it expands and contracts, as it presses into the floor and then rises up again. One of the biggest characteristics of change is noticing as that change happens. It's having a reference point to remember where you started so that when you look back, you can see how far you've come. So truly noticing, cultivating that body awareness here. Just take it all in. Any trace of discomfort, know that it's temporary. Any sensation of heaviness, let that continue to develop. As you feel yourself breathe, maybe take a moment to just marvel at the steady pace that happens naturally, the balance present in the exchange of inhale and exhale. This week, as a studio, we're starting the conversation on, or I guess rather we're ending the conversations, the week is coming to an end, on Pridaya. Directly translated, Pridaya means to give and receive in equal measure. A balanced exchange. And on the surface, balance can seem incredibly difficult to achieve in this life. But when you really look closely at the systems, at the patterns, at the ways in which we are uniquely designed from the inside out, it can be quite astounding at how readily available balance is to us. It's happening right now as you breathe. You fill up, you empty out. You receive and you give that breath in equal measure. So continue to notice. Maybe if your brain is a little overactive at this time, allow your thoughts to wander. Maybe ask yourself, in what other areas of your life is balance easy or difficult? to come by. Always knowing that there's no right or wrong answer. In the same way that we're building body awareness, so too are we developing overall self-awareness. 
that is truly the practice. If you haven't already, maybe adjust the level of your blocks a little lower or a little higher for your last several breaths right here in this Supta Bhattakadasa. Think back to where you started. The sensation of the stretch, what you felt and where. Has anything changed? just listening, not yet moving, know that we're headed soon into a twist. And for this first twist, it might be helpful to sit up in a moment and watch the transition as I demonstrate it for you. You don't have to move just yet. But when we get to the second side, you might feel confident and comfortable not watching. So just know that's just fine too. So from your Supta Baddha Konasana, either listening or starting to point your knees towards the ceiling once again, soles of the feet come to the floor. Just notice here intuitively, are there any adjustments that you'd like to make? Maybe lifting the tailbone up off the floor for a moment or windshield wipering the knees from side to side. Either turning to look at your screen or rocking yourself up to a seat. I'm gonna come up to a seat and demonstrate getting into the posture from that place. So as I hug my knees into my chest, I'm gonna take just a little bit of momentum to come all the way up. I'm gonna set the blocks a little farther away from me here. And what I'm gonna do is keep my knees bent and just drop them over to the left side. Now, these will change over time as we come into a twist. So just know that wherever your knees are casually, we can change that up later. Now what I'm going to do is walk my hands over to the left and we're coming into a little scorpion variation here. So I'm going to bend into my elbows. I'm going to lower my chest down to the floor. I'm going to extend my left arm. My left arm is going to go straight out to the left. Wonderful. Now your left cheek or your forehead or maybe even your right cheek will come down to the floor. Whatever causes the least resistance to begin, bring your head down and just notice if that is really intense on your shoulder, your back, your belly. And if you're looking to add a little bit more of a twist here, think about sliding your right knee directly on top of your left knee. So now your legs are stacked. Good. Another option is to maybe even hug your knees in a little bit closer to your chest. Good. So essentially we're in kind of a little 90 degree angle with our left arm outstretched. Very good. And over time, you'll start to feel your spine open up. You'll start to feel Maybe that it's more appropriate for your forehead to come to the mat. Or maybe you even start to look over towards those left fingers, inching your right cheek a little closer to the floor. That will take time. Again, this first minute really is used just for settling. Finding just the right place for your knees, for your hips, for your left hand, for your right hand. And 
And if at any point you feel as though you'd like a little bit more intensity in the stretch along your left shoulder or your chest, rather than keeping that left arm fully outstretched on the floor, you might bend your left elbow and come more into a goal post position. So your palm, your forearm, your bicep will still stay connected to the floor, but rather than that left arm straight out, those fingers will face the same direction as the crown of your head as your elbow is bent. So even here, where is balance at play? Can you still find those measured inhales and exhales? Now, although breathing is just one example of giving and receiving an equal measure, Pridaya more commonly is used in reference to the heart energetically and anatomically. The heart is a pump. It's a two way valve. It keeps us physically alive by receiving and sending blood in equal Sometimes the word equal is relevant in measures that are appropriate to sustaining our life force. So take a moment to ponder on that. Sometimes our hearts are designed to receive more blood than it pumps out. And sometimes our hearts receive a little less than what it sends back out. It responds to the other body systems in order to help sustain your consciousness. So now things get a little bit more complex. Are there examples that you can think of in your life where balance is achieved by you giving a bit more than you receive? Likewise, are there times in your life where balance is achieved by you receiving a bit more than you give? Both are allowed, both are essential. Take a deep breath in, a slow breath out. And repeat that three more times. Breathe in and empty out. Fill up and empty. One last time together, draw that breath in deeply and slowly let it go. Using your right hand as support here, Start to bring yourself back through center, very slowly unraveling recoiling, 
Maybe using both palms to press your chest up off the floor. And as you come through center, maybe notice if your spine just naturally wants to offset that twist with a little side to side action. Your tissues will tell you. And then preparing for side two. This time you're gonna drop both your knees over to the right side. Good, crawl your hands over to the right. So now you're facing towards the back of your mat. Don't worry about your knees just yet. Bend your elbows, lower your chest towards the floor and then decide right cheek, chin, or left cheek towards the floor. Your right arm will extend long. Once you get there, you might find that your knees stack. Not putting any pressure on yourself for this side to begin where the other side ended. You need just as much time to adjust and adapt. But now that your brain knows all of the possible options, perhaps you slide your knees in a little closer to your chest. Maybe you find a more restful place for your left hand to just hang out. nearly through that first minute, that adjustment period where a lot of your physical body is still trying to decide if it needs to protect your joints, if it needs to protect your muscles. Are you here on purpose? Or are you responding to some outside stressor? So very soon, you might start to feel very incremental softening, loosening. Or perhaps for you, this twist just continues to gain in its spiciness. Continue to breathe. Maybe this in and of itself is an opportunity to practice a little more Kridaya, awareness, that balance sometimes is achieved <laughs> by what we would perceive as imbalance. Did the left side require more determined focus? Is the right side a little easier to lean into? Can you receive more than you put out here? Many scientific studies have found that human hearts put out electromagnetic frequencies that travel far outside the confines of our physical bodies. That is to say, on a chemical, on a cellular level, your heart 
and those of other people within several feet of you communicate and interact without you ever having to make eye contact or have a physical conversation with that person. We're sending out and receiving back in information that seemingly bypasses our conscious brain. Giving and receiving in subjective equal measure. And continue to breathe. If anything about this posture feels as though it needs to shift. Now is a lovely time to maybe bend the elbow if you haven't already, or maybe slide one knee off the top of the other. Just intuitively make this more sustainable for your body. Take a deep breath in and a slow breath out. And moving as slowly as you can, feeling everything along the way. Start to make your way back through center, unraveling, knowing that there is no requirement for that transition to be graceful. Coming back to a Sukhasana, an easy seated pose. Just notice which leg is crossed in front. Make a little mental note of that. And then any sort of intuitive shifts or adjustments that you know you need after that twist, go ahead and take those. And then we'll meet right back with a neutral spine. Wonderful. Good. From that neutral center, take a deep breath in, sweep your fingers up. Maybe the palms meet, maybe they don't. And then as you exhale, drop your fingertips to the floor or the mat in front of you and start to crawl yourself forward. A very, very short forward fold here. As you walk your fingers forehead, you might find that your forehead travels to or towards the floor. We also want the outer thighs, the knees, to continue trending to or towards the floor. So keep those knees pressing downward. Notice all the feelings that come up from that simple action. And then inhale, walk yourself back up. Take a little side to side here, left fingers down, right fingers overhead, nothing fancy or really choreographed here. Just let this be casual. Come on back through center, right hand down, left fingers sweep over. And coming right back through center, switching the cross of your legs, opposite leg goes in front this time. Already notice the balance, the imbalance. We need both so that we have a reference point for the two. In Inhale, look up, reach up. Again, palms might touch, they might not. And exhale, fingers down towards the floor, the mat in front of you. Start to walk yourself forward. Notice the outer thighs, the outer hips. Is it a different experience on this side? You might not go as far, you might go farther. There's no right or wrong. Start to walk yourself back up. 
a slightly longer side bend this time. As you inhale, fingers go up. And as you exhale, left hand outside the left hip, right fingers reach past the crown of your head. Very good. Think about rooting a bit more weight into that outer right knee, that outer right hip, so you can really open through the right side ribs. And then inhale back through center, switch sides. Exhale, right hand down, left fingers reach past the crown of your head. That right hand can always slide farther away to give you more space. Left hip down, left knee down. We're gonna do air quotes on that. Sometimes that knee doesn't really want to move. Big breath in. Final breath out. And then inhale, bring yourself right back through center. Release your hands down. Any little adjustments you know you need, take those, feel it out. And as we head into the peak pose of the week, we'll take a supported fish pose. So if you have blocks, those may be your prop of choice. If you have a bolster, in my opinion, that is gonna be your number one choice. So if you have a bolster, go ahead and grab it. You're gonna lay it lengthwise at the back of your mat. If you do not have a bolster, basically you're gonna to need to situate some sort of cushion situation. So maybe it's a rolled up blanket, maybe it's a couple of pillows. If we're using the blocks, you're gonna set up those blocks like a capital letter T at the back of your mat instead. Wonderful. So I'm going to demonstrate with the blocks because the, the bolster is so much more self-explanatory. So I'll demo with blocks first and then I'll demo with the bolster after. So turning yourself so that those props are behind you. Go ahead, bend your knees, keep the soles of the feet connected to the floor. With the blocks especially, you want to lower yourself slowly so that that upward block lands just between your shoulder blades. So you really want to take your time, make sure that it's at the center of your spine, so that as you lay yourself back, you can take that second block and position it as a pillow underneath your head. So essentially we're coming into a shape here where we're reclining backward, our chest is elevated so that our arms can drop open to the sides. So if you're going the block route, take your time getting yourself set up there. If you're using a bolster, that bolster is gonna be long on the back of your mat and very simply with your hips butting up against the end of your bolster, just lay yourself back. A little bit more straightforward this way. <laughs> Good, the knees can stay bent as long as you like. If it would feel more comfortable for you to straight away let go through the legs, let them go long. And then just as we have been Use the first several moments to really settle, fine tune, adjust. The fullest expansion of your chest in this posture is gonna bring the arms open to a T. So the palms are flipped open towards the ceiling, arms are spread out wide, and because your chest is elevated, Gravity is going to open through the fronts of the shoulders, through all the pectoral and the intercostal muscles in the front of your chest. If arms to a T is too spicy, feel free to reach the arms overhead, maybe a cactus arm or a goalpost position, or the hands can rest on the belly. Finding when your body asks for little adjustments. It's 
one of the goals of yin is to find absolute stillness. But never let that goal supersede finding a place where you feel as though you can actually let go. Sure, discomfort is part of the process, but we never want to put that goal of being perfectly still ahead of listening for signs of pain or that we're pushing ourselves a little too far. The knees can always rebend, the arms can always change position. This posture can sometimes feel a little bit vulnerable because we're truly allowing our fronts, our hearts to open. If you compare that to the typical posture that we hold the rest of the day, this is the opposite. Often we're rounded forward, our shoulders almost creating this protective cage around our front. So the muscles respond to that. They develop tightness in certain places and looseness in others. So by opening through that typically tight and protected center, we're now inviting the muscles to receive where they typically give. To open through the front and slightly shorten through the back. Over time, this will create a very lovely balance that we casually call a better posture. And energetically, it allows that electromagnetism of your anatomical heart to travel even further. If you're no longer feeling that stretch through your chest and shoulders, change something up a little bit here. Rather than arms at a T, maybe try arms at a goalpost or just slide your fully extended arms up about 15 degrees, creating more of a wide V shape. See if that adds a bit more intensity. Continue to breathe.
taking a deep breath in. And a full breath out. Not moving yet, but knowing that the end of this posture is close. Again, this is a posture that does not require grace to let go of. So with that knowledge, just know that it can be a little tricky sometimes to navigate moving around props. So very slowly, maybe begin simply by bending your knees, bringing the soles of the feet to the floor once again. Maybe sliding your hands more down towards your sides. And then slowly taking in the sensations along the way, pressing into your forearms or your hands to help press yourself through center or roll to one side. Lovely. Sliding those props out of the way. And then again, maybe just noticing if there's anything that you need to let that big back bend go. Maybe a side to side, maybe a forward bend. But essentially just feel and notice maybe how your neck feels on your shoulders, how your head feels, how your shoulders feel. Is there a difference between your typical day-to-day -day sensation and how you feel now? One of our last postures together today is going to be a very short held bridge pose. I highly recommend using a block for this hold. So if you have a block, lovely. If you're using a pillow, that's just fine too. So once again, beginning with your knees bent, soles of the feet on the floor, slowly lower yourself onto your back. Keeping the knees bent, keeping the soles of the feet connected to your mat here, you're gonna press into your feet Elevate your hips and slide your block on its lowest level underneath your sacrum. Now your sacrum is going to be the very tail end of your spine here. So it should really feel like the full weight of your hips can rest easily on the block. So if when you let your weight go, there's pain or it feels unsteady, maybe slide that block a little bit lower. It's safer for the block to be lower than higher here. So just make sure that you're not dumping your weight into the curve of your low back. And then let your chin gently point up towards the ceiling. Let your arms rest down by your sides. If you'd like a little bit more heart opening, you can always gently tuck your shoulder blades underneath you so that your heart elevates just a tad higher. The chest is still open here, but we're helping redistribute that energy from our upper back bend in fish to a slightly lower back bend here in bridge. A few more breaths. Breathe in, breathe out. Keeping the knees roughly hip width distance apart. In just a moment, as we transition and let this posture go, the only pose left in our practice this evening is Shavasana, our final resting shape. So just know that that is your destination. If there are any stopovers that you need to make, by all means, let your body lead you through what you still need. Otherwise, start to gently press into the soles of the feet again, elevate your hips off the block and slide it out of the way. As you lower your hips back down to the floor, a direct route to Shavasana would be extend your legs and your arms. So 
If there are any modifications or other shapes that you'd like to take, maybe there's a twist or a happy baby. If you prefer legs up the wall to a tra traditional Shavasana, by all means, relocate yourself to a wall so that your feet can travel up. Otherwise, in the same manner that we have been taking through this entire practice, give yourself time to really fine tune your Shavasana. The knees might stay bent, the arms might be uneven from side to side. Wherever it truly feels that you can let go, that's where you go. Trusting that I will call you out when it's time. Let your brain mimic your body. And just rest. Wherever you are in your breathing rhythm, exhale all your air. And take a deep breath in. At the top, sip in a little more. And then open your mouth, sigh it out. Seal your lips once again. Continue to breathe in and out through your nose. But let it be slightly more controlled. You're aware of that breath. And 
and start to wiggle fingers and toes. Sending a little bit of movement into the farthest reaches of you. Maybe then it's the wrists and the ankles that begin to move. Perhaps followed by knees and elbows. Until eventually a full body stretch feels like the next progression of movement. And however you choose to return to a supasana, an easy seated posture, slowly make your way there. Just closing the eyes, allowing the palms to touch, thumbs to hover over the center of the chest. Take a quick scan mentally how you feel, the pace, the texture, the color of your thoughts. And then similarly, scan the body. How does it feel for your shoulders to float over your hips? Your head to balance at the top of your spinal column. Perhaps there's some change between now and an hour ago. If there is, that's lovely. If there's not, that's just fine too. Floating the thumbs to the center of the forehead and gently bowing the chin in towards the chest. With this gesture of gratitude, we bring an end to this practice as we head off into the next. Namaste. Thank you all so, so much for joining.